Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So today we're looking at viewer requested questions. Today is from Justin B on the YouTube behind enemy line Sam Chase. Could you tell some of the F-18 Sam Chase scenes from behind enemy lines 2001? I remember that film well. It was a cool film. Would a Sam really follow for that long? Um, so we've got the F-A-18C. I don't think they've got the F-A-18C because it was a two-seater, wasn't it, in the film RC? So they had the Super Hornet in the film. We've got the Legacy Hornet. So what F do we think they've got? EF? The 18F. 18F, right. Okay, let's go and have a look from the movie. So, I mean, we're on frame zero here. The first thing I see here is a quite a cool looking, what is presumably a real targeting pod here. Uh, it looks like the lantern pod to me. It doesn't look like a lightning. Have you got any thoughts on that pod? In fact, yeah, it, it looks, looks just like the lantern, lantern from the Tomcat, doesn't it? So I wonder... It does. Yeah. I thought the lantern turned into the lightning, so I'm wondering why a super hornet's got something that looks like a lantern. That'd be interesting to see if oh, this is going to get so geeky, isn't it? I um, I wonder if anyone's got any comments on that, or, or or maybe this is how a new sniper pod looks or something. I don't know, but that to me is almost identical to an F-14B lantern pod. Anyway, let's go. It's even got kind of crappy resolution like it. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And there's a unit there that's presumably going to fire the missile. That is a BMP. Stop. No, that's not it. That's just a BMP. Mean general. That's the main antagonist, RC. He's a meanie. Oh, Estrella! It's Estrella, RC. I've seen Estrella. Yep. Uh, what is it? Is it a 9 or a 13? It's going to be an SE 13, isn't it? Uh, most likely. It's hard okay. to tell. So I need to double. Remember that SE 9's got a different body. What is it? Holy shit, we're being painted! Okay, so he's, he is indeed being painted. So that SA-13 is a... It's not a radar-guided missile. Once it's fired, it's just an IR-guided passive missile. It does not give any emissions. But the mothership, the launcher, does have a track antennae for ranging, uh, for actually pointing the missile in the right direction, if you like, and finding the hostile. It will tell this uh, Hornet here that, yes, it is being painted and possibly tracked by a SAM. So this is good. Although I saw a figure, I saw a Master Caution light. Master Caution. I don't see any reason why a more Master Caution light will show master caution is if something is broken on the plane you know uh, something's damaged what? so it's been painted um i believe usually sa-13 operators won't actually paint a target usually uh, you'd quickly turn it on and track almost immediately so you get very little actually painting on an s-13 uh, usually track i guess it depends on the operator though so we'll scratch that the sa-13 missile is fired uh, now, it's no longer under radio control. Mothership has done its job. It's now a fire and forget. That looks awesome. Okay, it's got a little graphic. If I can... I can't see it. They had a little graphic saying where that missile was. Now, it's possible this jet does have an MWS, a missile warning system. So the RWR and via radar emissions, you would not know that the SA-13 fired you because it's an IR passive heat-seeking missile. You would possibly have on this aircraft an MWS. I stand to be corrected if we've got any Super Hornet pilots out there or whatever. If you've got an MWS, a missile warning system that can detect the heat of the missile and that could potentially give you a, a, an azimuth of the missile. We've got something similar in the JF-17 in DCS. However, it looks a bit glorified in the movie. Well, the first thing is done. <laughs> oh dear, this isn't good. 101 of dodging, well, any missile, but let alone a IR guarded missile. You do not put your afterburners on because you're just increasing your heat. Um, this is the best way to get killed. And for God's sake, you don't go up. A missile loves going up. It has very little mass to pull it down and it has a very powerful engine in comparison. An F-18 hates going up. It's a very heavy aircraft in comparison with not much power. All you're doing is helping the missile in every way possible. So yeah, I mean, it looks very cool, but it's not what you do. I see a single missile tracking on it. I don't see it. Call my turn. Just like That is not a... What the hell is that? I'm stopped on the missile. That is not a Strela. No. That's just some, like, random made-up thing, right? Never seen anything like it before. It's a movie it's missile. It's a movie missile to look dangerous. It's a Darth... We'll call it the Darth Vader. It doesn't look very maneuverable. And they're also burning for quite a long time. I've only just started, I see, so it's only just... So it's gone up, now it's coming back down. Okay. Where is it? 
he says, where is it? That is realistic because you've got no real warning. Even with an MWS, it's still not great. If you've got an MWS that's working, your, your best thing you can do for a missile is obviously you look around and you get your Rio Wizzo to look around and try and find it. But that bit's quite realistic. Oh, and we're right past him, RC. Look at it, it's chasing him. Okay, so what you had there is a very cool scene, and we're going to have to go back. Completely unrealistic, but it looked cool. Let's go back. So what the missiles do, the, the plane's going more or less in a straight vector from what we can see. And the missile is fishtailing left and right, like it's got loads of momentum, like it's doing big fishtails. The missile doesn't do that. The missile actually takes lead. If it did what it was doing now, it has a, a cone of sensor in front of it of about 30 degrees, 20 degrees, something like that. So where it's going now, it could actually no longer see this guy. And bear in mind, it's a passive sensor on the missile there. So it would actually just lose track if it did this. It doesn't do fishtailing in real life. What it does is it always fly so that a it can keep the hostile within its cone of sensor and b it uh, it flies lead so wherever this guy goes currently facing there the missile will be aiming somewhere in front of him here and what we'll see if we go in dcs we'll never have this fishtailing type effect because it can always outmaneuver the aircraft what this is showing is a slow maneuvering lumbering missile that's slowly catching up at 10 knots that's not how it is uh, reality is much faster than the plane and at least while it's on burn, and you can only see why see a missile while it's on burn, generally speaking, which is where it makes this white smoke, assuming it's a smoke missile, which an SA-13 is, and it only burns for a few seconds. They'll only burn for six to ten seconds, and that's it gone. After that, it's invisible and slowing down. So let's uh, carry on. Yeah, you see how it kind of went past him like it looks really cool in the movie but in in real life it has almost no kind of momentum to take it out there in real life it's perfectly controllable always out maneuvering there <laughs> cool scene he's put some flares out and that is yep absolutely that is what we're doing what you should do so this has been about 15 seconds already that missile would have run out of rocket fuel and at the moment it will just be on glide uh, and it's just now burning its own mechanical energy and it's just a race now between the hornet uh, whereas uh, and the missile running out of mechanical energy but in the movie it's still got engine a really slow inefficient engine by the looks of it for Darth Vader missile Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Look at him chasing round. This looks it's like a dog chasing a bull. It's so silly. Oh another one. Jesus. Yeah, and that's really important. What you do is when you dodge uh, uh, a Strella, at least in DCS, I'm a, you know, I'm not a real pilot, but the, as soon as the Strella is fired, you come off your throttle, you turn ideally into the missile. If you can terrain block, great. Most of the time you can't. You turn into the missile to hide your uh, heat signature of your engines and you flare and you do a bit of roll if you can. Now, the only problem with that is it puts you in a position where you can no longer have any mechanical energy to dodge the next missile and the follow-up one is usually the killer. And so this, um, although this is completely silly that he's just gone 10 miles with a missile chasing behind him, the follow-up is actually quite realistic um, because to beat the first missile... Great! Second missile in here! Three miles in closing! Pull up! Change your vector! I got him! I got him! Ah. So you saw that on that make-believe, what I think is a make-believe MWS, it had the missile range. It said one was kind of closer than the other. I don't think any MWSs that I'm aware of actually give you a range like that. But because how would they? How would they know how far away the missile is just by the heat? How would they know what type of missile it is to compare against a heat chart, you know? So uh, that is just, I think it's just movie. Wow, it's caught the other one up already. <laughs> Burners on, he's gone up again, so as, a dead, as soon as you go up, you're a dead man. We need a bigger heat decoy. Annoyingly, that is the natural thing to do. If you're an inexperienced pilot, the first thing you want to do is go up because it feels safest. The reality is, and against any kind of missile, going down is always the safest and getting as low as you possibly can. Now that's cool. 
So it's been going for about half a minute now, these missiles. So the Darth Vader missile must have some kind of super secret rocket technology that we don't know about that they used on the Saturn V or something. That's interesting. So he's dropped his fuel tanks, RC, and he was a Lipwing's level. I, that seems realistic. I don't see why that wouldn't be possible. And the fuel tank hit something and blew up, which I think, yes, sounds right. I mean, um, there's no igniter mm. there, but when you've got that much kinetic energy in something that has a flammable inside, you know, you, instantaneous pockets of heat occur thousands of degrees when that ha happens. So there's no doubt it probably would explode, I think, um, like that. Um, I'd say unlikely. You don't think it would explode? A fuel nope. tank a fuel tank hitting something at 400 knots, I think it will always explode. Uh, well, I, I may be wrong. I may Could be wrong. Be. The thing is, I'll see, when, you've got, when you've got I mean, such... There's, no, when you've got there's such, not enough heat. That's it. That's what I disagree with. See, I used to repair damaged cars, and we would have uh, the cars would be crashed at 60 miles an hour. And what I would see is where the crumple zone had crumpled, the... The, it, temporarily that bit of melt that crumpled had grow, grown red hot so you know a thousand degrees celsius or whatever melted the paint off uh, and that's because of that transfer of energy so when that casing of that fuel tank is colliding with something at not 60 knots but 400 knots and bear in mind ke equals half mv squared uh, i reckon you've got such a massive transfer of kinetic energy into heat energy which is where it goes at the end of the day uh, to bend that structure. I think you've got a flash point there. So it'd be interesting to know what other people think about that. But um, I it think... also depends on if the tanks are full, half yeah. full, empty, because it's not the liquid that burns, it's the yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And jet fuel is very hard to ignite. Well, okay. Uh, well, unless you have a significant heat source. We'll leave it there. RC thinks that they won't light. I think that they will light, but we'll see. What happens next? I bet the missile is going to go for it. Clear on top. Coming back down. I got two missiles in sight. Both tracks for the fireball. <laughs> he, uh, he went over the missiles I've seen. Came back behind him. Oh, oh no. This is... Right, one of the missiles went for the fireball. And that's interesting. Obviously, this whole thing of the missiles following them and him being able to evade the missiles like that, all of that's complete rubbish. Interestingly, would the missile go for the fireball? It depends on the seeker head of the missile. Now, the older missiles, the M9, P kind of peas and earlier, they would happily go and shoot after the sun, uh, right? Because they were simple, simple analog technology in there. They don't have the processing ability to tell what is the sun and what is um, an aeroplane uh, uh, engine exhaust. These, what we're looking at here, aren't real missiles. They're fired from what we think is an SA-13. We'll go and check it out in a minute. By a uh, makeshift Darth Vader missile comes out and with well i don't know what seek ahead but it would have to be like an old 60s seek ahead to be you know just to lose track like that and then gain another track on the sun or a big piece of um fire so maybe it's possible if it was an old seek ahead and a really weird missile anything thoughts on that rc no okay let's carry on no. the, the other one i bet the other one's going to go do a loop now watch this Still on burn. Came and found him again. Um, so it lost track and then it kind of recommitted somehow and found him, even though it's not in a sensor cone, and somehow got a, a lock on him again. Is that possible? Uh, absolutely no idea. I've never seen it happen, at least in our simulator that we play. If any real pilots know whether a side or under type missile can relock, highly unlikely, I think, but honestly, no idea. So let's carry on. Oh, look at that! It went, it went past his wing, hit his wing, and the, now that's interesting because the fuse didn't go off. So this missile would have a radio or a laser type fuse, kind of shooting out to the side, and when it got beside the guy before it hit him and to the side of the guy, the fuse would go off, and um, it would, it would, it could have a different, you know, depending on what the warhead is. Generally, it's going to shatter out shrapnel in a kind of um, 180 degree ring around it, and because of the forward momentum of the missile and the high speed, it's also going to go forwards. So it's like a ring that's pushing forwards. It should have set the maybe it's a faulty fuse, RC. It might be a faulty fuse, which is a real thing, of course. He's flying too long. It's all sorts of warnings. I guess makes sense. Oh, the missile turned around and come back! 
Oh, this is a super He-Man missile. These Darth Vader missiles are nutty. It's come back at him again. So it's burnt for about two minutes now. It's dodged his fuel tanks, come back at him, recommitted, come past him. It's hit it's a bit of his wings off and damaged his hydraulics and his electrics. Then turned round again, even though the missile didn't get hurt at all, and then recommitted. Now that definitely isn't possible in so many ways that it's beyond stupid. It's all gone weird. Oh, that was a cool scene. Now that is not a real warhead. I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. It's Unfortunately, the rods. Unfortunately, you're saying it. no. That's not how. That's not how it works, is it? RC. I know, but it's, that's what they're. <laughs> okay, I, okay. Obviously, that's not a real missile. That's not a real warhead. But I give it. It does look cool. So it's just a firing some little nasty little rods forwards. Look, that's. <laughs> Now, the reason why you couldn't do that is to actually get a missile to actually aim perfectly at an aircraft. It's actually a really hard thing to do. What you do in the majority of warheads, this isn't all, but this type of missile in a real Strella, is it flies beside the aircraft. That's the best really you can get. And then the, the radio fuse gets triggered and it spreads the, 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 the ball bearings or whatever out in a, in a ring. So something's going to hit the missile. This has got like a directional warhead, which just goes completely forwards, which is stupid, but really cool looking. <laughs> And it shattered his wing into a bit of CGI there. That looked pretty cool. Oh, cool. It was leaking fuel and then the flame went up the fuel uh, trail and hit the jet. Um, oh, and the front bit's falling off. That's so cool. Oh, look at the few, look at the ejection sequence. It's even got zero ways. That was cool. I mean, look, this is complete rubbish, but you've got to admit, there is a reason for movies to do this because it just looks so cool. So the front of the um, nose of the aircraft fell off, um, which is pretty cool. And then uh, he ejected and it showed like a, obviously in a real ejection, it happens in a couple of micro, uh, milliseconds, but in this, obviously that had to slow it down. And it showed uh, that the rocket boost is firing on the chair and it showed the zero rise because when you eject in a plane, I, I'm assuming in this plane type of plane as well, it, it will zero rise all of the data in itself so that if the Russians will ever capture it, they don't get the data out of it. Now, it doesn't do that cool thing like you saw there where all the computer chips and stuff were melting. That is just, I think, a representation of the zero rise Let's try and see that again. Look, you see it all burning up and stuff. It looks so cool. Let's try that again. That happens after it hits the ground. That happens when it hits the ground. So there's there's absolutely <laughs> no need for that, folks. But it did look awesome. They kind of just like they like melted it with a blowtorch and sped it up. Rocket boosters fire. No spins around. Get out! Get out, pilot! The, uh, the, the front section stayed intact. That's silly. Oh, oh, that's the end of it. So that front section would have been just atomized. Anything that... Uh, the thing about the plane crash is... I mean, a good reason to be in a plane crash, a proper plane crash like this where you fall out of the sky, is that you don't know anything about it. You're just vaporized. And that's just part of when you get so much mechanical kinetic energy, it's said 200 knots or above, and it hits the ground... You know, there's nothing left. It just, it, 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 the solid matter, um, you know, becomes gas. It becomes liquid. It, you know, just changes. Uh, so you don't have a lovely bit of aircraft like that unless it was literally, you know, stalled at 100 knots or something. Um, anyway, we're getting off topic here. Uh, so everything, everything about that was wrong, basically. Would you agree, RC? Yes. Uh, but, however, I do kind of support it. It's you know, the vast majority. A real Strela launch that we'll go and do now is boring. Like, it takes five seconds. You die or you don't die. Uh, this is cool. It makes you want to watch the film again. It's complete BS if you know about aeroplanes, but you know you've, you've got to make a cool film at the end of the day. So I personally support it. I think it's cool. The original incident was an F-16, and it was a Cub that shot it down. Uh, KUB uh, SA-6. Yep. Roger. So they knew the planes were coming, and they switched on the missile radars mm. very sparingly. Which is and what you then, do, of course. Uh, yeah. And then it was overcast, so. 
So why the didn't they use a buck in the film, do you think? Warning. Do you think they just couldn't get hold of a buck launcher, I guess? I, mean, I think a, it was just a loose... It was loosely based on the original... Roger. ...incident, which was in 95 in Bosnia. Yeah, it's Bosnia, isn't it? Uh, SA-13 Strela. So Mark II Strela. Let's double-check it is the right... I think that's the one we saw. SA-9 would be an old, like... 60s type model. I can't find that now. There's the SA. No, it's definitely not an SA9. So it was an SA13. Okay, I'm just gonna plonk him there. Got four IR guided missiles. And here comes our F18. Zoom! Over we go. It had two uh fuel tanks, didn't it? On the No, it had three fuel tanks, didn't it, RC? Because he it dropped had two. He dro it had two, right, Roger. Didn't it? I can't remember. I'll put a couple I can't remember what missiles. I'll put, sure of, I'll put a couple of AMRAMs and I'll put a uh, a uh, couple of fuel tanks on there. Okay, we're in now. Myself and RC are in FA-18Cs. We're going to go and fly by him. This time we're going to do what they did in the film, which is just as soon as they were shot at, put the afterburners and go straight up and see what happens to us. You ready, RC? Fall in behind me. We're going to lose altitude quickly because uh, they were quite low when they were taking their pictures, weren't they? Hostiles are over to the one o'clock somewhere, but I don't know exactly where. Good 400 knots cruise speed. Okay, stop there. Uh, I've just stopped us there. The radar on the SA-13 has now come into life, and you can see we've got an antenna between the missiles there. It's now tracking and ranging us. It will not use that radar to actually fire on us per se. It will actually use the seeker heads in the missile. So we've got the warning, and but they didn't um, maneuver until they were fired on, so let's carry on. Missile out. Up we go. It's going for you. It's going for you. Missed it. Missed me. I, oh, shit. I dodged you. it. I somehow dodged it. One more. Then he came down. Do you. <laughs> this ain't going to end well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh oh, one more for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that is why you do not go high. The missiles will eat you for breakfast if you go high. Right, let's go and do it again, but let's do what we should do, which is, well, it depends on our exact azimuth where we're going to turn into or away from it, but this time, we're going to, this time we're going to turn engines off. We're going to probably turn away, go low, and flare, and we should be able to beat them, hopefully. Checking flares. Flares are good. Okay, I'm going low and down again, all in line. This time, as soon as he sees me, uh, fires at me, I'm going to go engines off. Turn probably down, right, and low. And flare. I can't actually remember where he is, annoyingly. You'll find out in a second. Yeah. Spike cap. Spike. Crystal out. Engines off, flares out. Evaded. Follow up missile, flares out. Low. Oh, I'm hit. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> Did you survive? Yep. So oh, at, least, at least one of us survived. There's three missiles out. I'm good. Right, well done. So those missiles will only burn for a few seconds, and that's it. That's about what we did there. It was about the biggest chase we can do from an SA-13. It's not going to go much further than over here, where he is now. Go and get another missile out and try to dodge it, RC. See how far we can get the missile to burn for. He's got one more missile left. Missile out. See the type of missile we've got here. And it did not hit him. It basically, because it had lost its lock on him, what happens when it loses its lock is it cancels. But there, not much further than that, would have been as max it can actually burn for, at which point it just becomes a, 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 a very relatively fast glide missile. Um, I think that's all we need to show on that. Anything else you want to add to that RC? That covers it. I hope that was useful. We'll see you later.